Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Trevor and I'm from Kenya. Today, I'm going to talk about the Global Career Scholarship, GKS. I thought it would be nice to have a different perspective on the scholarship, so I brought along my very good friend, Ash. Hello everybody, my name is Ashraf Garson and I am from Yemen. KGSP, Korean Government Scholarship Program, which is how we used to call the scholarship, has been integrated under the Global Korean Scholarship. When we are talking about GKS or KGSP, just know we are talking about the same thing. So before we start this, I want to show you a really old photo I took with Ashraf around oh. nine years ago. <laughs> oh no, man! Today's video is going to be in a Q&A form. However, we are not going to tell you how to apply for GKS. If you're interested in a step-by-step -step procedure, you can just go online. It's a www.studyinkorea.go.kr and if you click on <laughs> if you click on <laughs> GKS you're going to have you're going to see all the information the steps of applying question one uh, how did we know about the scholarship and what were we doing before applying for the scholarship okay so actually I got to know about the scholarship through my father one day I was just sitting there, minding my own business, you know, really? preparing for my normal classes because actually I, I was going to university back in my country. I was like a sophomore in Yemen actually and then, uh, you know, one day my, my father came and he was like, hey, there's like this scholarship for Korea, you always wanted to go to Korea, right? So it's a good chance. The Kenyan government had put an advertisement in the newspaper and my friend was like, oh, there's an application for a scholarship. And honestly, I didn't want to apply for the scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> I was preparing to enter to the university to do electrical engineering. I actually did one semester wow. of electrical engineering in Kenya. No way. Yeah. That's, so, you know, my major back in my country as well. Electrical engineering? Yeah, I was yeah. a sophomore. I always wanted to study either in Korea or Japan because I thought it was like completely different culture than uh, Western culture and Middle Eastern culture. I really wanted to experience this new style of life. Also, I knew about Korean history and I was so impressed actually by the Korean history. Oh man. I'm serious. <laughs> wow. You wouldn't believe me, but that's true. <laughs> oh, oh, two totally different perspectives about, <laughs> about Korea. Yeah. Like, I barely knew anything and to be honest, I thought I wouldn't come to Korea. I was like focused on studying in the US. But then here we are. <laughs> here wow, we are. Wow, nine years nine later. Nine years later. Plan B lasted <laughs> this long. Wow, okay. How was uh, the application procedure in your country? We were like informed through the the embassy's website or through posting in the... Uh, it's weird, but it was in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Yemen. That we have like a place where they post about these scholarships and stuff. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, applications were all uh, submitted to the Korean embassy right away. So the Yemeni government has to do nothing with that. It was solely through uh, the Korean government and through the Korean government embassy. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. For us, it was the government. It was the Ministry of, I think, Higher Education, Science mm -hmm. and Technology and then the embassy and then they would go to NID and then to the universities but to the best of my knowledge uh, these days you apply directly through the Korean embassy probably things have changed we don't know and Ashraf was telling me about the university track, track and mm. the embassy track I think it's good if you explain that a bit back in our days in 2012 KGSP or GKS offered 100 scholarships for 66 countries around the world and all these 100 scholarships were offered uh, through the embassy. But I think in 2015 or 2016 they started, uh, they added extra scholarships uh, around I guess 60 scholarships and it's not embassy track, you don't apply through the embassy but it's regional university track. So you uh, fill your application form and send it directly to the universities you want to apply for. They give you a, a list of universities that you can apply for and you'll, you'll give it a shot there. But the thing is, 
you know, with the university track, you don't actually compete with people from your country. Oh yeah, you compete with people who have applied to that university. Everybody, yeah. Yeah. For example, we have 60 scholarships and we're applying for Kemyong University, okay? So, uh, I am from Yemen applying for that scholarship, Trevor is applying from Kenya. So we're basically like competing for the same uh, seat in this university. Yeah, so a different dimension of uh, competition. Yeah, and also I checked the guidelines a bit. You have, uh, they have categories of universities. You have like type A universities, which are like Solde, I don't call you the blah, blah, blah. And then you have type B universities, which are mostly regional universities mm -hmm. uh, or universities which aren't offering bachelor's but associate degrees, like two, three or three oh. year courses. Oh, so they also added during our time at 2012 KGSP, we didn't have uh, associate degrees. We just had bachelor's degrees. Guess, yeah, yeah. But then they added bachelor's degrees and they added like types of universities. And you have to select, if you're going to select three universities, you must select a university from type B universities, oh. like regional universities. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think they're trying to like globalize their regional universities. And uh, so, okay. Yeah, <laughs> probably for... using KGSP to do that. Yeah, true. Yeah. Actually, that's, this is what it seems to be. They want to diversify more. What did you prepare for the interview? Interview seems like we're skipping stages before, <laughs> because before, before, <laughs> right. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> before the interview, we had to write a very long uh, application form, if you still remember, like eight oh, forms or something. Sorry. The application. Let's go to the application the part. The application form was like tiring because it's pretty long and it's uh, sometimes, you know, they ask you to do a lot of things, medical tests, you know, get like a recommendation letters from here and there. Anyway, so that was a little tiring and one should put a lot of effort in that one, you know, because that's really, you don't, that's you really don't, vague. Like, what do you think distinguished your application from the rest we'll of the We'll get to that. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the most decisive things for us, because mostly we are like, uh, mostly it's uh, high school graduates or university, probably sophomore, sophomore. junior, maybe more. Yeah. But anyway, uh, these people actually are focused about their uh, performance at school, yeah, that's, that's true. That's one decisive factor, I'd say. Language skills. Of course, your cover letter, your personal statement. These two are very, very deci decisive. For me, I feel like what distinguished me was my academic record. Also, I was really confident with interviews. Like, well, I was really confident. Well, <laughs> Trevor here is one of the most... The brightest minds of Kenya. Ah, uh, come on, come back on. Back in the day. <laughs> back yeah, in the day. So of course. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I didn't know any Korean <laughs> at all. And I started learning Korean after passing the interview. And the only thing I learned was Hangul. I was just curious. I was like, what are these weird looking characters? Now, is how did you choose your major and your university? Okay, so I'll start this one. Okay. Uh, for me, it was easy. So, uh, in the same track of ambition, you know, I was like, I'm not just going to Korea. I'm going to Korea. I'm going to the best universities in Korea. Go you know where this is damn. going, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I, I started searching top universities in Korea, top engineering majors in Korea. And based on the search results, I put my uh, three selections. Okay, selection. which one? The Sky I'm University. Really curious. I'm so Seoul National Koryo? University, Koryo, and Yonsei. Oh shit! <laughs> I'm really? no, I'm, 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 no chills, man. I'm going for it. Whoa! I was this confident. Man, that's, I was like, that's... I'm going there. Oh, I want to learn at the best plant only in Korea. I know it's an industrial country. I want to be an engineer, but I also want to go to the best universities to get the best education and stuff like that. This was the mentality I have. Oh, wow. This was my ambition, and this was you know my selection as well i was ready i was like okay oh man. i'm gonna do it i'm not gonna have like a safe option really yes so for me i took a really different path and the path that i took was first of all i had the same mindset if i'm going to study in korea which was my backup remember i was like i might as well apply for the best <laughs> university <laughs> like <laughs> i usually select like two universities from top 10 and like one university. university from like 
middle range middle yeah, range, middle range. Yeah. So like I try to balance out my options. So in this case, I selected Seoul, but then I was focusing on because you have a list of majors you can select, right? And also you have a list of universities that you can select. So I selected universities which had aerospace, mechanical, mm -hmm. and aerospace engineering. Mm -hmm. And then oh, so so I found Seoul National University, and there was Busan. Pusan. Pusan. Wow. <laughs> Wait, so it was, was like, this was this among the top two or like the backup university? No, no so, so like I was No offense to Pusan University, <laughs> it's a good one. I'm sorry. So like Pusan is really good with aerospace. Now I'm curious area. about your third option actually. I can't remember. <laughs> I just Oh I so just that definitely know, was the backup university. I just know it started with a D. <laughs> D like, a lot of things start with a D, man. <laughs> <laughs> so many different batches actually had different styles of choosing universities yeah. like the batch before us came to Korea after getting accepted by the NIID and after coming to Korea and after what the, when they were almost done with their language course they got to apply for five different universities really yes Next question, did you have any extra requirements from the university and did you have a phone interview and what did they ask during the interview, if you had a phone interview? Oh, the answer is no, I didn't have a phone interview but I got a call from the university just to make sure what major I actually applied. For me there was no interview and I'm not sure but I think uh, Seoul National called me just to confirm my major too. Mm. And yeah, to confirm if I had made up my mind on going to Seoul National, that that was it. Wow, so, they didn't call me. They, they didn't call they just you. Rejected Dude, me they just anyway. rejected you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you have to prepare before moving to Korea? How was your visa application process? And did you face any unexpected problems? Everything went <laughs> so smooth after Really? That. Yeah, I didn't face any problems. I was oh. so surprised. Look, what? How come? I'm not used to this, you know. <laughs> I I chose my flight. I even met online. I met a few KGSPs oh. whom uh, were taking the same flight with me from Dubai. So I was like, hey, take the seats next to me. And I told them how. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, so imagine oh, you meet man, your fellow so cool. KGSPs on the airplane and you fly together. So you have a lot of time to oh, socialize. Yeah. It's not going to be boring. It's not going to be boring. But yeah. I can't remember if it was NID or if it was the institution or the embassy, I can't remember, but I just received a call and I was like, you have one week to give us your passport. If you not, if you don't, <laughs> we, are going to, <laughs> we are going to reconsider your, your, your scholarship. And so I was like, oh my goodness, it's Nairobi, it's bureaucratic, it's hectic. But then but, yeah. I made it happen. How? I have to confess. We have some corruption <laughs> happening here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. You can call it the express service at least. Oh, so, so yeah. <laughs> I ended up using the express service and I got my passport in two days. Trevor already started the tips. First, get your passport prepared. Get your passport prepared. Study some Korean. Mm -hmm. When you apply for the scholarship, and in the application, you mentioned that you learned Korean one semester or two semesters. You know, you have some basic knowledge in Korean. It really sets you uh, apart from the other applicants who don't know don't. any Korean, yeah. right? Like the only word I knew before I came to Korea was, I'm not kidding, annyeonghaseyo. And during those days, like foreigners, there were not many foreigners who could speak Korean. So we just say, annyeonghaseyo, and people would be like, wow, wow. 잘한다. 한국말 잘하시네요. 잘한다. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, but then I was like, okay. serious? I'm good at Korean? <laughs> <laughs> and if you happen to pass and become our hube, make sure to contact us as well. We'll buy you coffee. Like, it's Korean culture. It's Korean culture. To buy Pops hube's has coffee. Yeah, that, that's like our promise. So like, if you pass the KGSP, he promised, not me. <laughs> <laughs> You're throwing me under the bus. I'll buy coffee for 10 people. Ashraf will also buy coffee for yeah. 10 people. Wow, okay, that's generous. Do you have any questions? Write in Instagram, the comments. Instagram, write in the comments. And if you think this is helpful, just share. Anyway, 
See ya.